Hi everyone, this segment of work focuses on question 3.2, 3.2.3, 3, and 0.5. And it's an extension of the previous clip in this respect. And here we are asked to comment on the risk and gearing for both years. And they want us to quote two financial indicators with figures to justify our answer. So in this respect, let's now focus on uh, the information sheet on the question paper. And we're looking more specifically at the debt equity ratio. The debt equity ratio, very quickly, it seeks to explain the relationship between the debt and equity, or more simply put, between loans and own capital, or borrowed capital versus own capital. Borrowed capital versus own capital. What we got here last year, 0 0.3 is to 1, which meant that for every one rand we invested as owners or shareholders, we borrowed 30 cents. Looks pretty decent, that ratio. This year, for every 40 cents we borrowed, we've invested one rand of own capital. Sure, it's gone up by 10 cents, but no reason to get alarmed at all. But it's worth pointing out that here they want us to answer the question, comment on the risk. Risk has increased slightly from 30 cents of borrowed capital to 40 cents of borrowed capital to every one rand that we have invested. That was number one. The second one they want us to look at, we find it here. Return on total capital employed. So here's our number one there, and here's our number two here. Now, if you're wondering, how come he's not used this or is he not going to use this? It's not going to be used because return on average shareholders' equity is return on our own capital. Whereas this question paper here is talking about risk and gearing over both years, and that's borrowed capital. So let's, let's go back to return on total capital employed. Now, total capital employed is basically the whole owners, the, the, the whole capital figure, and that'll cover own capital and borrowed capital. So that's a total capital investment. And then return will be basically your profit before interest payments are made. So let's look at what's what the answers are here, because we didn't need to work out those ratios. Perhaps in another examination paper, you might need to work those out. So two different types of questions that are possibles for your tests and your exams. Return on total capital employed last year was 39%, which meant for every one rand that was invested in the business by owners and lenders, they brought back 39 cents, which is an amazing return this year. For every one rand that was invested in the business by owners and lenders, it brought back 23,2 cents or 23 cents. Now, that sounds horrible. But in truth, if that's all we saw, 23%, I'll bite your arm off and take it because that is an amazing return. Right now, you're not even going to get 10% return on investments in South Africa. And let's face it, a return of 10% in South Africa is amazing. However, we got to work with what's in front of us. And what's in front of us right now is 39% has fallen to 23%. In any person's language, that's not good. Yet, the numbers look decent. But your job as the student is to analyze it. They borrowed more money. Clearly, they borrowed more money. And you'll recall, in the earlier video, we spoke of this. And if you're watching this video before the earlier video, here's what we're looking for. Changes in loan. Last year, loan increased, sorry, loan decreased by 100,000 meant they paid off a portion of the loan. And look what went on this year. A whopping 651,500 was borrowed. And that's what diluted, that's what diluted, reduced their return on capital employed because you got more loans outstanding and you got to generate more money. And it's not easy. So that kind of takes care of that question. Let's now look at 324. Existing shareholders are dissatisfied that the new shares issued on 1st April 2020 were sold to the CEO. Now, warning bells must ring in your head because your teacher has picked many of these questions out of your official textbook and have worked on it. And when they gave you her name, you, be you quickly begin to realize where this question is going. Her name, CEO Ida Shark. And, you know, as much as the Sharks are an amazing rugby team, you have a person here whose surname is Shark, and that's not going to go down too well. But nevertheless, let's see if it's gone down too well. Give two reasons why you consider their feelings to be justified. 
I don't think we need to look too much at the question paper to come to some conclusions here. Because when the CEO buys shares in the company, everybody's going to say, how come we didn't get to know about this? And their thoughts will be on the button in that respect. Now let's look at what happened here. How many shares did she buy? So let's check. Uh, item B, share capital. On 1st April 2020, same date as, 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 as Ida there, the company issued an additional 250,000 shares. So a quarter million shares were issued. And all of this went to Mrs. Shark. Now, how did this affect the business? Right? How did this affect the business? And in trying to find that out, let's look at some key ratios. Return on average shareholders' equity fell from 31% to 17,7%. That's not good. You could also argue return on total capital employed because its own capital, which we spoke about at length on the previous question, fell from 39 to 23%. Net asset value per share, how much of the assets are owned by the shareholders? fell from 409 cents to 332 cents in any language, in any country that does not look good at all. Here are some other figures that have taken a hit. Market price of share, 5 rand 40, 4 rand 10 cents, not looking good at all. So from an ethical perspective, did she get the permission of the shareholders at an AGM or an SGM, SGM, special general meeting, to acquire these shares? And the answer is no, because the shareholders will say, why all those shares to you and not to us as well? Like, for example, uh, why don't we peg your shares at no more than 10,000 at a time you can buy? And then the rest of the shares must go out into the open market for other shareholders. Ethical reasons. And ethics in our country is governed by the Companies Act, which is one of the most powerful uh, uh, public company legislations on the planet. And coupled with this is the King Code, especially King 4 in that respect that talks of transparency. You don't need to know the complete aspects of King and the Companies Act, but suffice to say, there's an ethical problem here, which you must mention in your answer, that she's not allowed to purchase these shares without the knowledge of the shareholders, which must be gained at a special general meeting or even at the AGM. And then, of course, market-related reasons for this problem. Let's explain that. These shares were sold to her. Check this here. An additional 250,000 shares, all right, was sold to her for 375,000 rands. An additional 250,000 at 375. So you take your calculator, 375,000 divided by 250,000. That's 375,000 divided by 250,000. And I'm thinking you're going to get an answer there of 1 rand and 50. 1 rand 50 cents. Now, if she could pick up these shares for 1 rand and 50 cents, and the market price of the share is 4 rand 10 cents, some very nasty business has been conducted there. And as shareholders, of course you are going to be upset and put this in your answer. Now, obviously you're thinking, this man has said so much. What do I write? Yep, you need to cover ethical reasons, which we've described, that no permission was granted to her to buy these shares. Refer to the Companies Act and refer to King 4 in that respect. Lack of transparency issues. And then market-related issues, take some numbers, crunch the numbers, show the 375,000 divided by 250,000. Show that 1 Rand 50 is the final answer. Link that 1 Rand 50 back to 4 Rand 10 cents and state that these shares were woefully underpriced and she just struck it lucky there in that respect. Okay, that covers the 324. 325, the cash flow statement reflected a positive change of 980,000. Let's go and look for that. 980,000. On your calculator, Negative 330,000 was there, and it turned to 650,000. So basically, we add these two numbers, 330 plus 650, and that gives you that 980,000. Now that, at first glance, looks marvelous, absolutely marvelous, because they've generated almost a million rands extra over one year. 
But wait a minute, we got the data for 2021. Let's see where the million rands came from. Straight away here, cash flows from operating activities. In other words, money we made from running our business. We didn't make money. We lost almost 150,000 rands. So it's, it's all gone pear-shaped over there. So where did the money come from? Keep going down, keep looking, and you'll find it. Cash flows from financing activities brought in a million rands. And that offset the 150,000 to give us the 980,000 that we have here. So let's, let's talk a bit about that. They sold shares to the value of 375. That's the one that Ida Shark took. Yes, it brought 375,000 into the company. And that helped to boost the changes in cash. And then they took a massive loan. Over 650,000 rands was borrowed. Nothing wrong with borrowing a lot of money, but that borrowed money must bring in very serious money. And right now, there isn't too much evidence of it. So how do we frame an answer for four marks here? I can help you to frame an answer for about seven marks here, but let's not show off with stuff like that. Let's, let's give them answers that they can use and they will give you your four out of four. Well, number one, starting here, cash flows from operating activities is a negative 148,080. Straight away, something appears to be amiss there. And that is because 375,000 came in from the sale of shares. That's number two. And number three, a further 650,000 odd came in from borrowing more money. And suddenly the company is looking good. It's like this, right? You have no money in your bank account and you depending on an allowance from your parents. You go and borrow 400,000 rands from some obscure bank. Suddenly you are like the richest person in the house. You have all this money and you are, you are amazingly wealthy because you're flashing this money and everybody's thinking, geez, this girl has got some serious money. But now all we got to do is look at where you got this money from. It didn't come from a profit you made from running a business. It didn't come from uh, winning a lotto or anything of that sort. It came from borrowing this money. And in borrowing money, there's an obligation to return that money. And suddenly you begin to realize you can't look wealthy with other people's money that you are not using to generate profits. Hopefully this segment has shed a fair bit of light on the following concepts. What is risk? And what is gearing? That's borrowing and how well we're doing with borrowing. And then we looked at some ethical issues where the CEO did some naughty stuff. And then the last bit, what looked like a good cash flow statement extract where 980,000 rands appeared to come out of the business records. We showed it didn't. I would regard this as one of a pinnacle set of questions where good numbers are not looking as good as they should. Uh, being a metric marker from previous years, it makes sense for me to advise you, this is the sort of question you should be focusing on because it, it paints a good picture and your job is to go and take some sandpaper and scratch under the good picture and see whether the good picture is really as good as it looks. Clearly from these questions we have answered, it leaves you with more questions to ask because this company is not as well managed as it should be. That does not mean it's a bad company. They've done some, some good business and they've also got some silly problems that they've got to deal with with respect to ethics, using borrowed money well enough and things like that. And that brings us to the end of this particular segment. Hopefully you found it useful as you work your way through it because I would urge you to handle this question on your own and then mark it against the thoughts that have been described here. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.